What's up, everyone? It's your girl, Sherelle. I'm the host of Let's Talk the Show, and this ain't a podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in this Tuesday, as we have a very special episode. We're continuing to celebrate Black love <laughs> this Black History Month. Tonight, we're discussing Black love in TV and film. And before we get started, I'm super excited. Uh, I got to give you guys what I'm grateful for. So, um, I'm going to wait till you guys join. I'm super excited, you guys. Okay, before I even give you what I'm grateful for, y'all see this here? Like, y'all. I see you guys are joining. Drop in my comment section something you're grateful for. And as you guys come in, make sure you share this live with three friends you think would love this conversation. Um, that's the only way we can get the word out about the show. Make sure you guys share. Just click the little arrow in the lower right hand corner and send to three friends. That's it. Pick three friends you think would like this um, and tell them to join us. We are talking black love in TV and film. Let me see what I got here. <laughs> We're talking black love in TV and film. We're talking about some of your favorite black love story, healthy black love stories, you guys, okay? We're talking about all of your favorite black love, okay? As you guys can see, I chose, give me a second, my mouth, my mouth is so dry. As you guys can see, I picked some really great black healthy love stories with the exception of like one, bro. Um, we got Poetic Justice at the top. Forgive me, guys. I've never actually seen Poetic Justice. We got Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield to the right, um, which may be your left, which is for the photograph. We got Love Jones. We got Blackish. We got Gina and Martin. We got The Wood. We got Maxine and Kyle. We got Toxic as, Toxic as Love and Basketball. And then right below them, we got Dwayne and Whitley, you guys. I am so excited to share and talk tonight. We got a great episode. Before I get into it, um... I gotta give you guys what I'm grateful for. Tonight, I am grateful for, I'm grateful for family. You know, I'm gonna say that. I think I'm just grateful for my family today. Um, you know, yeah, I'm just grateful for my family. Um, yeah, I hung out, me and my son was with my sister. And we just had a really good time laughing and shit. That's all we really do is laugh. Like, for real, we just laugh all the fucking, all fucking day long. Until we like crying and shit. Like we probably people probably think we be high because we be laughing all the time, but or laughing so much, like we really don't be high, we just be dying, and that's like my dog. So yeah, it's just grateful for family today. Um, y'all look at this hair, okay? Usually I don't even be liking to do it because my head is so big, y'all. It's like so big, but this is like one day old hair, and I don't really know how to maintain when it get like this. So I probably I said I was gonna wash it the other day. But yeah, so yeah, we are, let's see here, let's see here, we are still here, you guys. So, like I said, tonight we are talking black love and TV and film, and so I want to give you guys the, um, I'll give you guys the schedule for lack of better words. So tonight for TV, I know a lot of people were thinking that we, um, that I probably pick like a lot, some of the shows in there, which I did pick some of the shows, uh, some of the guests that were in that picture. However, I didn't want to do the usual. I feel like we always talk about Martin and Gina and I really wanted to, um, Martin and Gina, we talked about like a lot of the basic couples. I didn't want to go too far old school, but I still want to take you down memory lane and I still wanted couples that were relatable most of all. And I wanted healthy. It's really hard to find um healthy black images healthy images of black love in the media even in some of our shows it was really hard to find them because i didn't i mean it was impossible to find hey it was impossible to find anything that wasn't kind of top like completely 100 percent that didn't have its flaws but i just didn't want something that was just blatantly toxic right I um, mean, I didn't want something that was super old that we really couldn't relate to because times have clearly changed right so um and you know what? I am actually going to mention uh, Martin and Gina. My friend made a really good point about them. So for TV, I decided to pick The Blackish Family, which is Dre and Bo. And then for, I know I said TV, right? I chose Pat Poose and Remy. And so I think these come from two completely different spec ends of the spectrum when it comes to TVs, like reality TV, sitcoms, talk shows, things like that. So I wanted to, to, to choose still relatable, still recent, um, but just kind of like different ends, right? Um, and maybe they weren't the best couple because I feel like they're a little toxic, Pat and Remy. But anyways, then moving forward for sh uh, for movies, because I still wanted to keep it like, ah, still good. So for movies, 
black love and movies i decided to choose the wood and jumping the broom have you guys ever seen jump in the broom comment below if you guys have ever seen jump in the broom like i've seen that movie um and it was actually a really good movie i forgot what the name of it was called for so long hey make sure you drop in my comment section something you're grateful for so i'm gonna go ahead and drink my water you guys and then we're gonna get started If you guys are just joining, make sure you go ahead and click that arrow in the lower right corner and send this live to three friends you think would like the conversation. I think that is really important to share the news about shows that we like and things that we, you know, think have really good conversation. There's so much BS and stuff on social media. Like, just share the good stuff. Share my shit, okay? Just share it. Share it, share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. Tell people we have, I have really good conversations. Um, I'll be talking about bullshit all the time. Like, share the conversation, okay? I'm off this other guy. Alright. Mm. Alright. I don't know, you guys. I'm kind of feeling this today. So I'm going to be in my head. My hand's going to be in my head a little more often today. It, it looks in the spirit of love. Doo -doo -doo, look at that. It looks just like a heart. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. I'm done being corny. Okay. Moving forward. So let's jump right into it. Um, for our TV couple, I decided to choose Blackish. I'm not going to lie, you guys. Um, I've seen a couple episodes of Blackish, but I went back and did my research, right? Um, but I wanted to choose a relationship. I wanted to choose a couple, like I said, that was relevant, um, that was healthy. Um, and I did watch, I do, the few episodes I do remember Blackish. They touched a lot of touchy topics, you know what I'm saying? Like, just like old school stuff. But it wasn't so, like, I think that sometimes our shows can be so woke and so straightforward and so blunt that it's like, damn, black people, we don't always got to be woke all the time. Like, sometimes we can just have a good comedy show and don't be about shit, you know? It could just be some black shit. Like, sometimes I... I just don't want to fucking deal with politics and the reality of life. Let me just laugh. Let me grab a couple of jokes and get the fuck away from it for a moment. And I felt like blackish. That's the one thing I actually can't say um, from the episodes that I did watch was that you still got the idea, but it wasn't so hammered into your face that it was just like, fuck, it's so overwhelming. So granted, that does speak to the overall show, but not the relationship of Bo. So... I'm going to say I chose them, like I said, outside of, outside of them being relatable. Bo and Dre, I think, have a really unique um, relationship in the sense that they are a really good balance. Like, I was watching a clip about, I think it was an episode similar to um, George Floyd. And so, while one parent was trying to minimize and downplay and give what she felt her children hope... Dre on the other end would want to give his children a reality and they were able to disagree in front of their kids and still come to a conclusion that like you know what you're right and I felt like that was important because I feel like a lot of times even in a lot of older sitcoms or older talk shows the parents would go away they you wouldn't disagree in front of the kids and then one person would be like you know what you're right I thought that was really unique and then the fact that they just give a good balance one person is I guess say the good parent or the bad parent and it's not it's not just always one parent being that way. Some like sometimes Dre gives in, and then sometimes Bo gives in, and it, I really like how they played off of each other, and I love their chemistry. I, at first, I was really concerned. I had saw a clip, and I was like, I don't know how that chemistry. Is. And I went back, and I was like, Oh no, that chemistry is good. Like they're they're fired. This is real, and that's the one thing that I can say about that TV couple. The chemistry is real, and the way they balance one another. I don't. I felt like it was relatable in that sense it was a very real relationship they were very it was like it was real life to me i watched i'm like yo this is like this is real life like they balance each other in a real life way no parent is always a good parent even the good parent or the fun parent is gonna be the bad parent sometime and even a good parent or the bad parent is gonna be the fun parent sometime you know what i'm saying or, or in the kids eyes and i loved how they played off one another i love how they didn't shy away from that i love how they handled one another especially um uh, they got they were going through a divorce. I loved how they dealt with that and that they just I think maybe I'm really just speaking to their chemistry. Their chemistry was really good, but it just seemed like they're balanced. It was very real. They were very into their roles. And I really I really just 
like them. And you know what? I'm really kind of disappointed in myself for not watching that show more often. But it's probably because I couldn't stream it. So in my defense, that's what that is. But I really love, that's my favorite thing about Bo and Dre from Blackish. When it comes to black love, I felt like they did a phenomenal job of balancing one another. No person was always right or always wrong. And no one person was always being downplayed and dismissed. Or no one person was always having to compromise without getting something. I really enjoyed that about their about their relation, the dynamics of their relationship. So shout out to Tracy Ellis Ross and um, Anthony Anderson for that. They did a really good job, and it was I really can't stop saying that because it was really just balanced to me. Like sometimes you feel like in relationships you see one person giving more, and sometimes that can be toxic. But I feel like um, this piece of curl is like this is sticking up too. It's like you feel like you might see one person giving more, but for them it really seemed like a healthy balance, you know. I really like that was like I, that's my biggest takeaway from this that the balance and what they gave and taking their relationships um let me make sure i go back to you things somebody said i would try to listen but I, that's fine i appreciate you guys i appreciate you guys for tuning in if you can't listen in just make sure you hit that share button and share it with three friends just hit the arrow and send to three people you think would like it whether or not they open it who knows but at least we sent the word and that's all you can do um cute hairstyle thank you so much okay thank you thank you thank you um so then we're moving on to our TV couples. Um, I picked Papoose and Remy. I picked Papoose and Remy because how we were really, I mean, I've been introduced to Papoose since uh, Touch It, Bring It, with his verse on, um, his verse on uh, Touch It, Bring It, Touch It with Busta Rhymes. Um, he was actually one of, I loved, I loved DMX. I think he came right around the DMX. It's like, it, M is the monster, X is the beast. Um, but outside of that was DMX's verse. Papoose's verse was um, got the war, got the palm of New York, got the world, got the got the world of New York in the palm of my hands. I could make a tight fist and I could make a tight fist and make it crumble ridiculous or something. But that's how you know I really I like Papoose. And in the in the video he has like a globe in his hand. Anyways, I'm going all up. Um, but he had I think he has hand tattoos as well. And this is how you know I really was like into this stuff because. When the glow showed up in his hand, he's like, he say, I got the five bros in my hand. And the five bros in New York are like the Bronx and stuff like that. But I was like, well, after I saw that video uh, of Pat Poos with the globe in his hand, although it wasn't a tattoo, um, he said, I, I can make a tight face, make crumpled Nicholas. It made me want a hand tattoo. So that was even neither here nor there. The reason I want a hand tattoo is inspired by Pat Poos. So just say I've been hip to Pat Poos for a while now. Remy, um, I got probably hip to Remy around the same time she was rapping with Tara Squad, we know, before she went to jail for a long time. And that is why they are one of my favorite TV couples. Even though reality TV promotes this type of extreme level of promiscuity um, of, of just hoeing around, disrespecting women, disrespecting yourself, not having any type of regards for the harm that you cause people on national television... Papoose and Remy did not fall victim to it. Um, Papoose, honestly, we really just lifted Papoose up and like they were like the black love couple because he didn't cheat on her. You know what I'm saying? He he, there was no infidelity in their relationship. He was faithful to her. He really treated Remy like he worshipped the ground she walked on, and that was so rare to see in reality TV because we was dealing with Peter Guns, Rich Dollars, we was dealing with Cisco, we was dealing with DJ Selfs. We were dealing with all these cheating men, all these disrespectful men. And we even had grown men on national television calling themselves the creep squad. I mean men in their forties. Okay, these ain't no thirty year old men. Um these are grown as men. You know, seasoned men on national television calling themselves the creep squad and it was super refreshing to see another grown ass man well into his relationship faithful promoting black love and promoting solidarity with his woman that was the complete opposite and i really feel like vh1 did not do a damn good job of promoting remy and pat pose like that man held her down and remy returned the favor getting out to just like you know she was just saying like her man wanted her baby and she gave him a baby not saying that she didn't want her baby but you know he really wanted her. it was something that he really wanted i feel like to unify them um they got married they have done went on to host events and um shows i forgot what i feel like i saw them all um but just that they were my favorite couple because they really 
hit a spot that I feel like a lot of people can relate to, which is incarceration of a spouse. And to see that a man did what a lot of men won't do, can't do, and what we often see women do, which is stick by that person's side, remain faithful throughout their duration of their sentencing, and then for them to come out and still hit the ground running and take off. That to me was commendable, it's honorable, and it's to me what makes one of their, their one, it's to me what makes their love iconic black love in reality TV. We do not see that many successful, happy, healthy relationships on reality TV, especially not love and hip hop. Um, a lot, most of the, almost, shit, 99% of the relationships on love and hip hop, romantic relationships, are toxic as fuck, with the exception of Pappos and Remy and maybe three or four other ones. Those are like, you know, I don't really see any other healthy relationships. Um, I, you know, Yandy and Mendeecees had ups and downs. Jewels and Kimbella and even Chrissy. Oh God, not even going that far. Long story short, Pepples and Remy are one of the few successful, healthy, happy relationships I've seen on reality TV in a long time or that I can even recall. If you see any other relationships, let me know, tag them and we can discuss them. But I didn't see any other happy, healthy black love relationships or any display. And I feel like they didn't even get, um, I feel like Pepples and Remy didn't even get the recognition and like they should have been pushing them but i felt like you know vh1 had an agenda with love and hip-hop so we can't be out promoting black love and, and all that they want to promote fuck up fuck up a hundred times then run it back and i think that is some toxic shit which is why i really worked hard to make sure that the couples that we're celebrating and that we're honoring with black love are not toxic granted now Remy was in jail for i think almost attempted murder but that's not the point. We're not talking about people's criminal past. We're talking about their love. And their, to me, their love is iconic black love on reality TV. Like, you didn't see any other um, relationships. Like, they went through a lot and he remained faithful. Um, and not only that, they didn't fall victim or get caught up in, you know, in the mess on TV. Um, so, yeah, that's why I like them. I really like them. Um, I think Pat Poos is a is a phenomenal artist as well. But in his words, you know, he's a lyricist and Remy is a hit maker. And I think that's a great explanation of them too. I think that they really balance each other well. I think that I think their dedication to their love and in the way that they really just I'm tell you, I'm granted we don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but the way they love each other, the way that man worships that woman, the way she makes it clear like this is my man, like, don't play. Like, is their their public displays of affection just be going unmatched? And and it's just like the fact that he really stuck around and was faithful while she did her census. It was just like, wow, it's like it's possible to have a man that treats you like this, that cares about you, that loves you, that does anything for you, okay? And and it's like you can have that, but you have to be willing to give that. And I feel like she's given that in, in which in turn they've been married. And they have this happy family and, and you know, their healthy black love. So shout out to Pat Poos and Remy. I like them. Like I said, um, I'm a huge, I'm, I'm a Pat Poos fan. So, yeah, those are my, I didn't want to make this long because I feel like we are, um, these couples just have like a lot and you, I really want to make sure I get through everything. But those are my two favorite black loves on TV, which are Dre and Bo of Blackish and Papoose and Remy of Love and Hip Hop. I need like one of those things, those sound machines. So we're gonna move right on for it because I promised I was gonna make this long. Um, black love and film. You guys, let me tell you, I felt like a lot of times we don't recognize black love in other areas of our life. We only recognize romantic black love. I wanted to recognize, I think my favorite, uh, my favorite display of love outside of romantic love is the way people is the way people love their siblings i think that is an amazing way i feel like people love on their siblings so beautifully you know what i'm saying like you ever seen a brother and a sister as close close or two sisters so close like t and tamara the way they love each other and the way they um do everything together it's like oh my gosh like it's just like we just see so many examples of great sibling love um i love what T and Tamara are my favorite. Charlie Murphy and Eddie Murphy. Um, what else? Who else? Siblings, 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 siblings. Um, I'm trying to think. Siblings, siblings. Marlon and Sean Wayne's favorite. Like I love them. Like I just feel like we have so many great examples. Oh my god! But they didn't have any other black love on there though. Um, those are like some of my favorite like examples of black love. So 
Speaking of black love, um, I chose for one of my favorite black love uh, in film, I decided to go with, uh, with, I decided to go with, let me find it. Give me one second. I was so excited to pick this movie, you guys. This is easily one of my favorite movies. I decided to go with, ding, 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 The Wood. Okay, let me tell you guys. I love this movie, okay? The movie stars Omar Epps, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know those other two guys' names. This star, ooh, it stars Omar Epps, and what happens is, um, one of the guys, so a guy, my name is Mike, I'm from North Carolina, and he moves and he, ooh, I am so sorry. Um, I didn't even know I was tired. Um, so Mike moves and he meets, he moves out to a new state. I don't even know what state he moves to actually. He moves to a new state anyway. He moves to a new school. He meets these two guys and they are some of the biggest jokesters. And you guys know the story, you know, they become tight like this. Mike ends up getting a crush on a girl that everybody wants, which is Alicia. His friends ain't shit at this point. They still getting to know him. They do they bet him a dollar. I think they saw a dollar and a stick of gum to go touch Alicia's butt, right? So they're on the playground. Y'all know he touched Alicia's butt to so Alicia smack him down. He get up and run. She said, I'm gonna have my brother beat your butt. It was like, ah! I was like, he should have kept his hands to himself that it was wrong. But I love this movie. And then y'all know Stacey came and whooped his ass. Mike took his L like a big dog. And that's how the Lloyd story began. But I chose this. Um, I chose The Wood as a, um, as, a, as a film to celebrate iconic black love because it really showcased brotherly love. And these are not his blood brothers. These are people that he chose and that chose him. And I think the fact that they were able to stick around from high school Oh yeah, Tay Diggs, right? Uh, Richard T. Jones and Tay Diggs. Um, I think that The Wood is a great example of black love and a black love that I wanted to celebrate in film because it showcased brotherly love. These are not his biological brothers, but these are men that chose him and that he chose and that stuck with him from uh, school all the way up into adulthood when they're getting married. And I think that it shows the evolution of the men. I believe um, Richard T. Jones, I think he has a... a well, he has like a, I think his truck was a, it, was, it wasn't an Escalade. I forgot what type of truck he had in the movie, but it was a newer truck. And it was like, it was Explorer. That's what he had. He was like, man, what you got? He's like, I got an Explorer. It's like a newer Explorer. And, they, and it just really showcased their love for one another, um, how they supported one another, um, and, and how how family and love sometimes happen when we're least expecting it and that family is not always the people that we get to choose or that we're born to that we're born with sometimes they choose us and I wanted to really display healthy black love you know they went through a lot you know they was at the store and the store got robbed Alicia brother Stacy robbed it which is like my favorite scene in the whole movie he literally robs it and this stupid fool Mike talk about some Stacy like shut up um so you know yeah, like, I, I don't know. I just felt like this was a good movie to go down memory lane and that the wood just really made you feel good. Like, these are home, these are homeboys, okay? And y'all rocking through thick and thin and it's just like, it's just, it's just a good, feel good movie because it's so relatable. I feel like so many guys, so many boys did this. You want to get the girl that everybody got, you hit a butt. Or I don't know about that robbing part. And y'all really should stop putting your hands on girls' butts. Um, but you know, it was so common for it to happen then. It wasn't that big of a deal. And then him and Alicia end up dating and they end up being together. And it was just like, this really was just a feel good moment. I mean, it wasn't, un it wasn't any toxicity really. I mean, her brother was like selling drugs and robbing and killing people. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like overall, it was really about brotherly love. You know, it was about standing up for your brothers. It was about sticking with your brothers. It was about checking your brothers when they're wrong. It, I love the friendly competition and them trying to get numbers at night. Um, you know, I really was just like, yo, these is his homeboys, you know, and he really loved them and they've stuck with each other on to them getting married. And so, um, I don't know. I really, I really just wanted to showcase some sibling love, some brotherly love. Um, and that's really why I just chose the wood. I really enjoyed that movie. That's like one of my favorite movies. So, yeah, y'all, I really, I just, that, that's one of the movies I'd be like, oh, I'm going to see if I can find it tonight and watch it. 
Um, yeah, let me see what you guys say. Smacking ass is always a win in school and now. Yeah, now you smack somebody as you're going on a sex offenders list. Don't don't go putting your hands on nobody's booty, okay? Your ass is going on a sex offenders list. No cap. Like you are going on the sex offenders list. Somebody's mama is gonna find out. Is a fucking whole me too movement. Your ass is done. Don't do it. Before, yes. I yes, before. It was still wrong, but you know, it was a little more acceptable. Um, and I think that the difference is now, you know, I feel like even before then, you were able to tell people's intentions. You know, like she knew he was new, he ain't know no better. Not saying that that justified what he was doing, but you know, not knowing him, she didn't really know his intentions. After he got his ass beat and she saw he took his L, she was like, oh, maybe he's not that bad of a guy. Maybe his stupid ass friends put him up to it, you know? And so it was easy, you know, it was easy to pinpoint his intentions and what type of person he was, his character. So, um, yeah, that was just a really overall good movie. And I really just wanted to highlight really just brotherly love, you know? Um, and, and that friendships are important that you maintain them, you know, and that you respect your friends and you love on your friends and you check them when they're wrong and that you enjoy the good times and you don't, and you know, the bad times don't last. That's really why I wanted to highlight that. Um, but yeah, I really love that. We're moving along. Um, if you guys think this is a conversation that a friend would love, make sure you click that arrow in the lower right corner for me and share this conversation with three friends you think would love it. Um, we're going to move right along to our last uh, couple. <sighs> okay, I watched this movie a thousand times and it, I never remembered the movie, right? This movie, um, I think, is a good movie. It has some great actors. Um, it stars Laz Alonzo. It stars uh, Loretta Devine. It stars... Uh, I forgot. Paula Patton. Um... And it is jumping the broom. I'm going to watch the wood tonight. Thanks. Yes, go watch it tonight. Um, we're going to talk about what you should be doing after this episode, but we're going to talk about that later. Um, jumping the broom. I'm super excited. I didn't put them up there. Jumping the broom um, is a great black love story, right? Um, and I, re I think this was, I think that there were so many there were so many different complex situations inside of one situation, right? Um, I think that this was a, you know, a, a by faith thing, how Laz Alonzo and Paula Patton met. Um, and then moving forward, they were moving really quickly, which was, you know, rather, um, you know, rather scary for the people around them that loved them. Um, and so then we saw the different complex areas where Paula Pan family was dealing with maybe going bankrupt and family lies, you know, family trauma passed down. And then on Laz Alonzo's side, you found out where his, he had been raised by a single parent and she was having a very difficult time letting her son go. I think that both of these situations are very, are fairly common, um, and definitely in a black community. Um, especially, you know, especially with the, the family lies about who may be who kid. I feel like that's something that you see a lot more that we don't hear about as often, but probably happens a lot more than we think. And I know for a fact that we always hear a lot about it. You know, I don't even want to say if it's just black mamas. I think single mamas, period, just, um, have a hard time letting their sons go and being married because they've raised these men. They've raised these boys to become the men, their man and not somebody else's man. So I think that that letting go was always some th that complex area is always something that we see, but it also has these complex areas. But it also celebrates traditions, which is do 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 jump in the broom, and that was uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was something that the slaves would do because they could not officially get married. So they jump the broom as a way to signify that them this is a way to signify their marriage, and so I think that jumping the broom was also celebrated black traditions uh, and you know it celebrated our roots and it was the unifying of two families right and i think that's why this made a great black love story. it was a black rom-com oh my god it's a black rom-com it's a, a great black rom-com because it does unify two completely separate and and different families with their own complex issues but it combines and unifies one another with the tradition of jumping the broom, which is significant. Like I said, you guys, um, like a significance because um, it's rooted in slavery. So I think that's why jumping the broom was a really, really, really 
great movie. I've watched that movie so many times I never knew it was called Jump in a Broom. And then, let me tell you what I, what I think about. I like that movie. You know, I like the movie, but sometimes I wish I was just screaming at the thing, like, just listen to your mama. Because I feel like Laz Alonzo was a little, like, you could have helped. I think he didn't go get his mom from the thing. Like, he could have picked his mama up. Um, you know what I'm saying? I love how, I love how even then, because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's not Bow Wow. I think it's like Romeo or somebody else is in that movie and he's a younger guy dating an older woman. I don't think it's the right movie. That is the right movie. I am no, I ain't tripping. This is the right movie. I don't know why somehow Roscoe Jenkins just popped in my head. I think that's Roscoe. Um, maybe because the same, maybe somebody else plays in there. But I know that in Jump in the Broom, there's a younger guy dating an older woman. And, you know, she's like, I ain't dating. You ain't got nothing for me. And I love how that was it. I, I feel like sometimes they can turn so raunchy. They can just make it so like, ugh. Like, I don't know. Those type of interactions when there's a younger guy and an older man, they just look so tacky. But I loved how that was still done very tastefully. It was still very rom com -ish, like. So I really love that. Because sometimes they be given smaller other actors, you know, like maybe supporting actors. They'll have like a completely different interaction like it's I mean it should be different but sometimes it's like so far left field than the outside of the scope of the whole movie it's just like ew but they were really tasteful and classy and that's really what I liked about that um you know I like that he didn't fall victim to what his raggedy friend I think that was his cousin that was D-Ray Davis that was telling him like man fuck her and shit it's like I mean everybody got that one nigga but I love that um it was still done like tastefully i really love this movie was done very tastefully and and paula Patton and laz and lazo laz i can't say nothing laz and lazo love is iconic black love because it celebrates the complexities of each individual's family but unites them with the black tradition of jumping a broom and that is why i wanted to celebrate them for black history but um i really hope you guys enjoyed tonight's episode i was super excited to talk about these black loves um, these were probably some of my favorites because the wood is just so nostalgic. Like, uh, I just love the wood, right? I'm a huge fan of the wood. Um, and I really am mad that I didn't watch more of Blackish, you guys. You said I'm watch the wood tonight, thanks. Of course, I swear it's such a great movie. Um, yeah. And so, let me think about what else. But I think that's all I got for you guys for tonight. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up tonight's episode. But before I go, make sure you guys tune in. I'm not even getting paid for this shit. So, I really don't know if I should be shouting these niggas out. But these are two of some of my favorite artists. And they are they have some of... Um, they have created the soundtrack to R&B and love music. So, I want to shout them out because they're some of my favorite artists. I have their music on my phone. Um, and... Really, because one of these artists was one of the very first CDs I ever owned. I can tell you right now how many CDs I've ever owned. I will be honest. I've owned Mariah Carey. I've owned Music Soul Child. And I've owned Chris Brown's first CD. No cap. And the very first CD I ever had um, was Music Soul Child. And then I had Mariah Carey, like, not too long after. So that should give you guys a hint to what I'm talking about. So tonight on Fight on the Fight app on Triller is Versus. And it is Anthony Hamilton and music soul child so while we are still black history month we are still celebrating back love i want you guys to go and support two of our favorite two of my favorite favorite black artists music soul child and anthony hamilton tonight at 8 30 p.m um on the you can look it up on the fight app or the uh triller app but yeah so once this episode ends make sure you guys go and support them um not even necessarily support they don't need support but just go and watch and fall in love all over again because that's what i'm gonna be doing um and i think that's all i got for tonight can i get one person to drop in my comment section um something you're grateful for and i will go ahead i am grateful tonight for <sighs> i take a deep breath i feel like i just said so much i'm tonight i'm grateful for tonight i am grateful for um, I'm grateful for the fighting spirit that God has put in me. I am a, I am going, you know, I'm going to ride that shit till the wheels fall off. And sometimes I need to jump the fuck out before the wheels fall off. Um, so it's a gift and a curse that sometimes I don't know when to give up, but I'm learning to, to, to better manage that. And I'm thankful for that. I'm just thankful for the, for the, like the never give up spirit in me. Because a nigga is never going to be down for too motherfucking long, y'all. Believe me, you. I am a type of person that be like, I got about I got about 10 minutes to cry this shit out. And then 
I gotta get my shit together, right? That's 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 me. It's like always trying to be solution based, right? But still giving myself time to process and grieve whatever has happened. Um, so I'm grateful that God has put that fighting spirit in me, right? Um, yeah, so I'm grateful for that. Somebody says being loved by others. Yeah, you know what? I I love that being you grateful to be. I I love that. I love that for you. I love that you're loved. I love, I really love that for you. I like, I think it's a grateful one. Maybe, maybe next week, Tuesday, mine will be, I'm grateful to love people and give people the love they want. I'll work on that one. Anyways, but yeah, I love that. I really do. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys tonight. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. We are, well, shit, we're like a couple days into our third year. Next year, we'll be celebrating the years. But I want to thank you guys so much. This show would not be possible without you guys. Um, I appreciate you guys. I love you. I'm thankful for you guys for tuning in every Tuesday for supporting, for sending words of encouragement, sharing, giving me feedback. I appreciate every single piece of it. And never, let me let you know, never, I never, never not notice some shit. Trust me, except for notifications sometimes. No key, I be, I don't know what my phone be doing, but I never not notice your love. Like any words of encouragement, I love them. I appreciate them all. I'm thankful to say that I have people that follow me, that care about what I have to say, that care about this vision and, and that shares it and that appreciates it. So thank you guys so much. I couldn't do this without you. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I got. My name is Cheryl Carter, you guys. I'm the host of Let's Talk the Show, and this ain't a podcast. I'll see you guys next Tuesday.